Hello, welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'd like to share with you how I created this side step card using a bunch of different Sizzix dies to create a really cute holiday scene from the North Pole. Now I'll have all the dies listed and linked down in the description below, but this is a quick review of which ones there are. So I have a tree die, I have mountains, I have hills, and I have a cute little elf die, as well as a curved border die. All right, before we create the elements that go on top, we are going to create our card base. And this here has all of the measurements for the scoring and um, the cutting. So you may want to take a screenshot to save it if you want. I will write them in the description below, but if you're very visual, this might help um, just to be able to see it. So very first thing we are going to do is we're going to take a piece of eight and a half by 11. And we're going to use a trimmer that has a slide blade on it. This will not work with a guillotine trimmer because we need to be able to start and stop our cut in the middle of the paper. And obviously you can't do that with a guillotine trimmer. So I've got my piece of cardstock here. This is the five and a half inch side. And I've got the top left corner at the two inch mark. I'm gonna put my blade up to the two inch mark here and I'm going to cut down to the seven and a half inch mark. So we have just a slit in the middle of our paper there. So I'm gonna move that trimmer away. And then the last part of getting our card base together is um, scoring. So I've got the slit closest to the top of my scoreboard here, and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter inches. So this piece is eight and a half. I'm scoring it in half, four and a quarter inches only to the cut line. You don't want to score beyond that. If you get a tiny little bit over, that's totally fine. It's not going to ruin anything, but we only need it to the score line there. Next, I'm going, I flipped my, so there's where I did the four and a quarter, turning it around. So we're going to start working on the other side. The very first score is going to be at two inches and all of these are going just to the cut line as well. The next line or the next score is going to be at four inches. The next one is going to be at five and a quarter. Now my trimmer has mostly half inch um, channels and then a few extra little ones. So I don't actually have a five and a quarter inch one. What we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and we're going to shift it up to the quarter inch. And then if I score at the five and a half inch line, and I'm just going to move it over just to get it to the edge. When I slide it back down, it's at the four and a quarter or sorry, five and a quarter. The next um, score line is at six and a half. And then the last one is at seven and a half. So we've got two inches, four inches, five and a quarter, six and a half, and seven and a half. So now we've got all of our score lines in place. The very first thing I'm gonna do is take this one here and score it in half. Now these two don't line up, so you're not gonna score, you're not gonna fold both of those, you're only gonna fold this side here. For this, the right side of your card, the first fold goes down, and you're just gonna accordion fold it where you've made those score lines. There we go. And then hold it down, and I like to take my the end of my scoring tool. And I like to get those score lines in there really, really, really well. And then I go back under and do the ones that are underneath here. Now, when this is folded, this is a four and a quarter by five and a half. So you should be able to get it inside a four and a quarter by five and a half inch envelope. Depending on how much you layer on top of there, you may want a little bit larger one if you've got a lot of layers. Um, I actually haven't tried putting my finished card into an envelope yet, but the size is four and a quarter by five and a half inches finished. So we've got our card base there. The side looks like this. This side is just folded in half once and this one is accordion folded. But each accordion is a little bit taller than the one before it. So there we have our card base. Now we're ready to start creating our elements to go on our card. First element we're going to do is create our little elf. Now he's from this die set here and he's intended to just be a silhouette, but I thought it would be cute to give him some 
features to make him look a little bit less silhouette like I did include a face because that is not where my strength is I'm gonna leave it like that if you are the type of person that can add faces to things you go ahead and I would absolutely love you to tag me in whatever you create because um, I'd love to see how people do it that's just not my strength so I left it plain um, to be on the safe side basically so I've got three and a half die cuts here cut the base one is going to be this peach one here. Now I did cut an extra green one here to add it to the back just to give it a little bit of more stability. Some of those areas are really quite thin. So because I want him to be standing on my card, I want him to just have some stability to him. So I'm gonna use my peach one as the base. First thing I'm going to do, the rest of them, we're gonna cut out the different features and we're going to glue them on top. So I'm gluing on the hat. And I like to use a liquid glue for this so that if anything seeps out, I can wipe it off really, really easily. This dress, Distress Collage Medium dries completely clear and it also dries matte. So if anything seeps out and I don't actually happen to wipe it off, I know that um, it won't be able to be visible. So next thing I'm doing is I'm cutting, I cut his neck and head off, and then I'm just cutting his legs off here to create his little outfit. And I'm assuming it's a he, but it could be whatever. Now I just did these with plain cardstock. You could absolutely use some printed cardstocks as well for this. It'd be really cute. I used some printed for the gifts. Um, they were just cardstock scraps. And then for the shoes, I'm cutting off the last little bit of his legs and gluing that on. And I think both of the shoes are fairly similar. I wasn't paying attention to where, which one this one was. No, there is a slight variation to them. Just an FYI. And really, I don't think it would matter too much if you got them on the wrong foot. But this is just a fun, different way to use this die. You can absolutely just do it as a silhouette and it would still be cute. I just thought it would be cute to give him some details. Now, for his shoes, I only cut the bottom of him with a scrap of black cardstock because I really didn't need the whole body because I wasn't using it. So there's no reason, if you are only using part of a die, there's no reason to cut out the entire thing. You can just cut out the part that you're wanting to use. So put that on his shoes. I could have left them green. I just wanted just a little bit of variety in color. There we go. All right, so the next step is to start cutting the pieces off of the glitter die cut for his fur trim. Now, I did glitter um, cardstock for this because I thought the sparkle would be really, really pretty. You could just use white. You could even use um, white and then flock it if you wanted it to be fuzzy. And if you have some fun flock, I know a lot of us have a stash of fun flock sitting around that doesn't get used a whole lot anymore. These extra pieces, I'm just tossing them. If you have an extra piece that happens to be big enough that you could use it again, you can absolutely reuse it. Die cut smaller things out of it. All right, for his little cuffs on his arms, I'm just guessing where they're gonna end. And to be quite honest, I don't think you need to be too perfect with this. When people see it, they're seeing the card as a whole. They're not necessarily noticing and nitpicking at little details. And frankly, I've always felt if someone starts to pick at detail on a handmade card, they're not getting another one. That's just my opinion. All right, this piece is a little bit tiny, so I'm just gonna put the glue directly on here and put them down. There we go. And let's add a little bit of trim to the bottom of his coat. Oh, 
I could have even taken this and just put some stickles where I'm putting the, um, the trim here. The only thing is the um, opalescent stickles that I have, they're all transparent, so you'd still see the green underneath there. If that's what you like, then absolutely you can do it. I just chose not to. So this tiny little piece here is gonna be super, super tiny. So a tweezers might actually be a good thing right here. So I'm just using tweezers just to hold it. And it's gonna help me put glue on it and put it down. And really, I probably could have left that off, but I just liked that on there. And I threw away the rest of that shoe, but I was gonna use a little ball at the end. Put them down there. These are some of the details that are a little bit nitpicky to put on, but they look absolutely adorable when you do. And I think they're some of the details that kind of make or break projects sometimes. All right, let's cut both of those pieces at the same time so I don't accidentally throw the shoe away again. There we go. Little dot on there. So the gifts, I just die cut and assembled them, like I said, from some printed papers. There's really nothing hard about assembling them. Um, so I'm not gonna do that on this video. But they're a great thing to do out of scrap pieces of cardstock or scrap pieces of printed papers. And if you're new to die cutting, I have a whole playlist on here that um, uses the big shot and shows you how to use different dies, different embossing folders and whatnot with the big shot machine. So the last thing I'm doing for the shoes is I wanted them to have a glossy finish to them. So I'm taking some glossy accents. I have it in a fine tip bottle here. That way I can get into a lot of detail and I'm just putting them on the shoes and I'm gonna let that set aside to dry. Now you can see here that when it's wet, it's milky. When it's dry, it's completely clear and shiny and you get more of that black color again. So just because you see the milky here doesn't mean that's how it's going to end up when it's completely dry. Now this has to dry 100% before we put it on our card. So I am gonna set those aside. I am gonna use this one here that's completed to put on the card, but I'll set that one aside to dry and I'll use it on another one later. So I'm using these trees on my card. And what I've always wished when I had these trees was that there was a silhouette version so that I could just die cut these, put them on and have a two-tone tree. But alas, there is not. So here is how I go about it. Now, I'll warn you right ahead of time, this is rather tedious. Um, but I really like how it looks in the end, so I just do it. And in the end, you get four trees, two with darker outsides with lighter inside because I'm cho choosing two different tones of green for this, and then two that have lighter outside and darker inside. So I'm going to go back with it as well. Oops, there we go. Now I can see that it hasn't cut all the way through on this one in that one section there. So I'm going to just pop this out of there and I'm just gonna run it through one more time in a different spot on the machine. Sometimes different spots on your machine have different pressures. So if you find, and you can usually tell right away if it hasn't die cut all the way through, if you find it hasn't done that, then just put it through again. So I'll show you how I put these together with one tree and then I'll just do the other ones off screen or off camera just so that um, you're not watching paint dry basically. Um, so I use some strong double-sided tape. My surface here is a silicone mat so the tape isn't going to stick to it. So behind all of those openings I like to take my tape and I just add pieces of it. So then I can start pulling the pieces of the die cut out and pop them in like a pencil basically sorry like a puzzle sometimes english is hard um, and that will help them stick into place 
So it doesn't need to look pretty on the back here. And this particular tape, like you can see, I am just um, ripping it. You don't need to actually cut it. Let's put one over here. All right, I might need to put more tape on it once I've got the pieces in there. But now I flip it over and you can see that I've got some exposed tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking these pieces out of the die cut. And I leave them in the die cut until I put them in here. Just because there's the odd time, if you pull them all out, there's the odd time where you don't know exactly where one goes. So these big pieces are easy to just pop in or pop out with my finger. The smaller ones I might need my die, die pick to poke them out. But it's just a lot more visually interesting to see a two-tone tree here, in my opinion. And like I said, it is pretty tedious, but I think one of these, this is one of those things that put a movie on, have a little bit of a distraction that way, um, and just do your trees. And like I said before, I choose two tones of green and I typically try to choose ones that are from the same color family just so that they look a little bit more intentional. So for these smaller pieces, um, like I said, you might need to poke them out with a die pick, but you also might need to put them into here by using your tweezers. This one's a little bit stuck on an area there on the die. And I can see I ripped something right there. So there's a piece of that cardstock there from here. So I'm just going to cut it off. And I only have a couple more to go. I'm just gonna pop them all out. Well, that was two out of the three. And then there's one more right in here. It is holding on, it doesn't want to come out. There we go. So we've got one of our um, die cuts done. These pieces of tape, I can tape the, take the backs, backings of them off when I want to go put them onto my cards. So that will have a double duty. That's why I use double-sided tape rather than say just masking tape or washi tape or die tape that has only one side of it because I knew I was going to stick it onto something. So it has an extra use to it. So now that all those pieces are in there, I think they're fairly secure, but if you find that there's a piece that's not super secure, you can put another piece of tape in there or even a narrower piece of double-sided tape. This stuff, the stuff that I'm using here is quarter inch. You can even use the eighth inch. So I'll see you once they're all done. All right, my trees are all done and ready to put on. I don't know if I'm gonna be using more than two of them, but I've got enough that I can choose from. If you didn't want to do, like I said, that's tedious. If you didn't want to do that, there's also this one here. There's this one here. These were just Sizzix ones that I have. Um, there's a bunch of different ones as well that you could choose to use, but I like those for this particular card. All right, so now we're ready to start layering our pieces on. I've got some mountains. I've already cut and assembled these. They're very, very simple to do. Um, and then I've got some hills. This particular die, where did I go here? It, is. it also has trees on it, but I eliminated the trees because I have these ones and I don't like the two of them together personally. So I just eliminated a couple air, a couple layers. And because there's so much detail with the step card and stuff like that, I kind of figured you're probably not going to miss it anyways. But we're going to cut these pieces down. So this piece here, I want to cut it down so that it fits in this back section here. The remainder I'm going to put in the, on the front here, but because there's not enough, I've got a little piece here that I'm going to attach. Now, this is gonna have a seam on it. 
those one of those trees is going to cover the seam. So we're going to use, we're going to be a bit strategic about this. So because this is two inches in and this is five and a half inches across, I need a piece of this here that is three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut that down. There we go, we got three and a half inches. Now, clearly one of these pieces wasn't glued all the way on. Oh, that's the top part there. Um, where did I just put my tweezers? There we go. All right, so before I add it to it, I'm going to just glue this little corner on so that it is there and I don't have to try find it later. I don't remember how it was actually on there. Oh, right here, there we go. All right, perfect. Now, this one here is going to sit in this back slot here. So I'm going to put adhesive over here on my card base. I'm not doing it on the die cut because otherwise I have to mark where the top of that shelf is. And this way I don't even have to do that. So I've got that on there. This piece here is going to get glued right here. And then when the card is folded, they should line up nicely. Now I've got several layers that are gonna go in front of this. So if this doesn't go all the way to the bottom, that's totally fine. And then I'm going to glue my other piece of the mountain. Now it was cool the way they designed this mountain. The end here, it matches the other part enough that it makes doing this really, really easy. So I'm gonna hold this for a few minutes and then I'm going to take some scissors and trim the side off. All right, it is dried enough that I can take my scissors and just cut the excess off here. Perfect. This piece we don't need. And I really didn't need to make as much of that, but I did. All right, this piece here, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna cut off three and a half inches. We are going to put glue on the step part of our card and pop it in there. I want to make sure that that goes all the way to the end here. I'm just going to hold this in place with an acrylic block. This piece here is a little bit too short, so rather than make a whole another hill just for that little bit, because it's going to be hidden by a um, tree. I'm just going to take this piece here and just going to cut it down a little bit. So we're just going to have an opening. And at this point, I mean, there may be tree covering the edge. It may be just fine that I didn't actually need to do that, but I wanted to make sure to have my hill on the edge if that happened there. And once again, I'm raising it a little bit because I have another layer that's gonna cover the front here. So I wanna make sure that those lines are joined. I want it to look nice when it is folded closed. Now one thing, I did my card base in white. So I have a white sky here. In my mind, it's kind of cloudy sky, but if that bothers you, you could do it in a different color. You could put some clouds in there. I kind of thought for the amount of um, card that you were actually gonna see it, which is just in this corner here, it wasn't really necessary for me to completely ink it or, or worry about that. I also figure a lot of my trees are gonna cover that. So there's very minimal that's actually gonna be showing on there. All right, now the last thing I have is a hill for the front. This is just an old Spellbinders die that I have that is a curved border. Um, you could absolutely cut this with your scissors. You don't necessarily need to have a die for this. So once again, I'm going to put glue on the front step here. This goes up a little bit so I can put the glue a little bit higher, but this is gonna cover this front piece here so everything looks pretty. 
Now I'm gonna put my acrylic block on there and let everything dry completely and then we will continue. Now just a little tip, I was having a hard time, because this tends to be a little bit thicker because of the accordion here, I was having a hard time for that acrylic block to get this part here stuck down, um, giving it enough pressure. So I just have some clips here that I'm holding in place while that glue completely dries. And because some of the die cuts underneath here have glitter on them, the adhesive on top of glitter, the wet adhesive on top of glitter, takes a little bit longer to dry. So you might wanna use some clips to hold things in place if you don't wanna actually hold them yourself. All right, our glue is dry and I've decided I'm going to put two trees here and I'm gonna put one over here. Now I'm gonna have them going a little bit past the sides of the card and I will cut those pieces off. Um, if you didn't wanna do that, you could just um, use a larger envelope, that would absolutely work as well. So I'm gonna take my tape backing off of the tape that's on here. And then I'm also going to put some liquid glue on it as well. So I've got both adhesives on here. So the one, the tree that I'm going to put on the other side here, I won't be taking all of the tape off of that one because I don't want to have that tape be sticking to my mountains and my hills when the card gets closed. So I'm only going to be putting the glue on the bottom part of the card, the part that um, st sits on the hill here. All right, make sure and I am making sure <laughs> to cover the seams there. I don't want to see that. I'm going to use this one here with the lighter outline and I'm going to put it down a little bit from the other one. So I made sure when I was putting my liquid adhesive there not to put adhesive on the side there that's not actually even sticking to the card. And then for this one, oh, it all actually sticks. I'm just gonna not put some on the tips of those branches right over here, just because I don't want a chance that they're going to go and stick to my mountains. There we go. So I am gonna put it down a little bit. Anything that goes below there, I'm gonna be trimming that off. So this here, I'm just gonna put my finger, I'm gonna put this down a little bit. I'm gonna put my finger where I want my adhesive to end, that I don't want it going past. And once again, if there was a solid part to this tree die, I would be putting it on the back here just to give it a nicer finish look, just for anyone that happens to look behind. But in all honesty, I. I don't really think many people <laughs> do bother with that. Okay, I want to make sure. Some of this is going to go beyond the card, so I don't want to put it liquid adhesive on that. Once again, there's no point if it's not going to be touching any cardstock. There we go. All right, before we go further, let's trim some of those pieces off. Easiest way to do it, flip your card over, and then you can see exactly where the end of the card is. Now having both of the tape as well as the liquid glue seems to be holding it in place while that liquid glue dries, so I don't necessarily need to put my clamps back on. And the last step, we're going to glue on our little elf here. Now that present does go a little, or the bow from the present does go a little bit high but I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. So I'm gonna glue up to about his waist and then a little bit on the side of the presents there. I wanna make sure that they are nice and stuck and on his shoe here. And then a little bit on his hat. So I try to put my finger over the part that I don't want glue on just to kind of remind myself where not to put it. Otherwise I tend to get carried away just over habit. There we go. All 
So because this part here is on glitter paper, I am gonna put my clamps in place for that. Let's see if I can put one in place on here, just to hold that in place. And the other option is just to sit and hold it. That should be fine. I might just sit and hold it. All right, our card is completely done. It looks absolutely adorable. Now the one thing with it completely done is I might actually make another one at some point and make the um, clothes on the little elf red, just as a bit of a contrast, just to make him pop up a little bit more. When I first started doing this, I did them as green because I just kind of in my head thought it should be green, but I think that pop of color would be really, really cute. And once again, you could do them as a complete silhouette and not have the color, but I do think he looks absolutely adorable like that. And you'll fold nicely to go into an envelope to mail. I love it when you can have something that folds flat and then pops up and can be really cute as a display. Now, I didn't add some stickles to the trees, but you could absolutely do that if you wanted to add a little bit of sparkle there. Thank you so much for watching the video and spending your time with me. All of the products here are linked and listed down in the description below. So if you're curious about anything, you can find it down there. Have a fabulous day.